So I wanted to give you all a little bit of an update on net neutrality. So I've been talking about net neutrality now for, what, five years? And it's been a fight to restore net neutrality. And since Biden has become president, we've been this close. So there's a 2-2 split on the FCC currently, two Democrats, two Republicans. We have a staunchly pro-net neutrality FCC chair, Jessica Rosenworcel, and she has already made it very clear that as soon as they have a majority, they're going to restore net neutrality. They're going to undo what Ajit Pai did. The problem is we have one FCC commissioner nominated by Joe Biden, potential commissioner, I should say, nominated by Joe Biden, who's been in limbo for more than a year. Now, Republicans and some Democrats, um, the corporatists in the Senate, have done everything they can to stonewall her confirmation, and they've thrown every single thing that they can at her. This is somebody who's very pro-consumer, also supports net neutrality, and if she were confirmed, then Democrats would have the majority on the FCC to restore net neutrality. But they started out by attacking her and trying to delegitimize her nomination here by saying that she was too woke and she wants to target Fox News and strip them of their broadcasting license. It's all horseshit, not actually true. Uh, and a year passed and they successfully blocked her from getting confirmed and her, her nomination actually expired. But thankfully, Biden decided to re-up that nomination. And finally, she's going to have a hearing on Valentine's Day, which is phenomenal. But the latest round of attacks on Gigi Sohn is very much in line with the anti-LGBTQ plus rhetoric that we've been hearing um, for the last year, this whole groomer rhetoric. So the new attack is them basically saying that she's like pro-human trafficking. I wish I were making this up. So it's a deeply homophobic and bigoted attack. But nonetheless, this is now what they're trying to do to de delegitimize her because again, they know that if she's on the FCC, they lose, or more specifically, their donors lose, and net neutrality gets restored. Now, thankfully, a wrench was thrown into the the uh, plans of these internet service providers like Comcast, Verizon, and AT&T, um, because certain states like California, New York, Oregon, Washington, we passed our own net neutrality laws. So they initially tried to block states from doing that, but that was struck down by a judge but that same judge left up the existing uh, net neutrality law. So they want somebody who's going to go further and not take us back in, in the opposite direction when we had full net neutrality during the Obama era. And so they know that their reign of terror, their pro-corporate anti-consumer reign is over as soon as she gets confirmed. So I genuinely hope that Democrats fight. But this is what they have to fight. This is what we're up against. So this is courtesy of the Los Angeles Times. So no one should be surprised that telecommunications companies revved up opposition to the 2021 nomination of Gigi Sohn to the Federal Communications Commission. After all, Sohn was known as an effective critic of the industry's monopoly power and a defender of the public interest. Again, she is one of the most pro-consumer nominations that Biden could have possibly made. And she's such a good pick that I was actually shocked that Biden picked her. So... This is an opportunity that we absolutely need to capitalize on. Every single one of us needs to capitalize on this. So nor was it surprising that the industry would attack Sohn with lies. After all, that's what corporate lobbyists do for a living. So far, the industry has succeeded in tying up Sohn's nomination for nearly two years. Thanks to Senate procedures, President Biden has had to submit her name three times, most recently in January, and she has received two hearings. Now again, two hearings over the course of two years. That's just straight, unabashed obstruction. Shamelessly so. In the last couple of weeks, the attack on Sohn 61, who would be the first LGBTQ member of the FCC, has taken a grotesquely ugly turn. An obviously coordinated campaign fronted by such right-wing enterprises as Fox News, Breitbart, and the Daily Mail has painted Sohn as a supporter of sex trafficking and an opponent of anti-sex trafficking initiatives. Now, when you see why they're saying this about her, 
you're going to lose your minds. So the core of this loathsome assault is that Sohn serves on the board of the Electronic Frontier Foundation. The EFF is a prominent nonprofit devoted to protecting user privacy and freedom of expression online. Sohn joined the EFF board, which includes leading academics from UC Berkeley and Harvard, digital entrepreneurs such as Brewster Kale, and experts in digital security and telecommunications law in 2018. Sohn's association with EFF is what has put her in the crosshairs of the far right among the EFF's targets you see is a pair of laws known as FOSTA and SESTA. Ring a bell? Uh, which were enacted in 2018 during a congressional panic over online child sex trafficking. FOSTA and SESTA, the acronyms, stand for the Allow States and Victims to Fight Online Sex Trafficking Act and the Stop Enabling Sex Traffickers Act have proved to be largely ineffective for their stated purpose and rife with adverse side effects. More on that in a moment. So in their attacks, all published on January 26th and 27th. And by the way, very, very conspicuous here. This is a coordinated propaganda effort, all published within the span of two days. I mean, they're so shameless. The industry is absolutely behind all of this. But all published January 26th and 27th, Fox, Breitbart, and The Mail used almost identical headlines stating that Sohn sits on the board of EFF. All uh, tried to link her with Danielle Blunt, a professional dominatrix who has been in the forefront of organized opposition to FOSTA and SESTA and support for the rights of sex workers and who received an award from EFF in 2020 for her efforts to fight online censorship. Now, FOSTA and SESTA is that controversial law that a lot of sex workers spoke out against because they stated that that would harm them. And even Bernie Sanders got some criticism for supporting that particular law. But because of this board and their opposition to FOSTA and SESTA, that right there is all that the GOP or the industry through their propaganda proxies needed to say, oh, see, Gigi Sohn shouldn't serve on the FCC because she supports human trafficking and sex trafficking. It's just shameless it's shameless but this is what they have to do because they can't just say don't approve her because she's against us and for the consumer so they have to make up some bogus nonsense like this in order to slander her what's important here is that Sohn has never spoken about FOSTA and SESTA and in any event the FCC has absolutely nothing to do with laws with the laws or their purpose the commission doesn't regulate online advertising and FOSTA and SESTA doesn't apply to telecommunications do you think that they know this of course they know this of course they know this they initially started fearmongering about Gigi Sohn basically saying that she would do all all sorts of terrible things which the FCC doesn't even have the jurisdiction to do like, the FCC really has limited regulatory control, but they made it seem as if she's going to, like, unilaterally crack down on Fox News and conservative media in some authoritarian way when that's just not true. That's just not true. She wants to get on the FCC to work for the consumers, which is a change because we've had a very pro-industry FCC for a while now, and it's been deadlocked. So she is not what they say. But, again, they have to be disingenuous, otherwise normal people wouldn't fall for their bullshit. That exposes the effort to link Sohn to the targets of FOSTA and SESTA and paint her as an advocate of sex trafficking as nothing but a cynical political ploy with an acrid undercurrent of homophobia. What may be even more appalling is that to date, Democrats haven't yet called out the perpetrators of this campaign, which is one thing that frustrates me, right? Biden, rather than just, like, having to renominate her once every year, you could actually condemn these attacks and defend your nomination. Has that ever even occurred to Democrats to maybe fight for once? The defense of Stone's nomination has fallen to her supporters outside the political mainstream. The EFF, in a January 31st statement, decried what it labeled an attempt to twist EFF's long-held positions and commitments into dog whistles against Miss Stone. And it is a dog whistle because this whole association with gays and pedophiles or sex traffickers and perverts... It's the oldest trope in the book, and it's been revived, so it's not surprising to see them revive this against, you know, a potential FCC commissioner that they're vehemently opposed to for different reasons. A resounding note 
of defense was sounded by Preston Patton, a former executive of Fox, ABC, and Walt Disney, who has supported Stone's nomination even though, as he observes, their political outlooks are poles apart. In a letter to Maria Cantwell, chair of the Senate Commerce Committee, which is planning yet a third hearing on Stone's nomination, Patton condemned the latest campaign as beneath scurrilous and the most cynical and baseless smear campaign ever waged against a nominee to serve the FCC. And here's what I've got to say. Oh, we have a dog back. Here's what I've got to say. Republicans might have gone so far in their attack against Gigi Sohn here that they almost force Democrats and other people who just see how brazen they are to respond to this. Uh, this tabloid trash, uh, uh, at its worst, as Patton labeled it, is all brought to you, I believe, by agents of some of the country's biggest cable companies and ISPs, obviously. Obviously, I've reached out to Verizon and Comcast, leaders in the industries Patton named, and the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, which has been prominent in the opposition to Sohn's nomination. I wonder why, but haven't heard back. The, uh, the attack on Sohn is one in a line of concerted attacks on Biden nominees feared by big, big business because of their likely effectiveness. Um, let's, let's go a little bit further down here. Uh, because I want to see... Okay, yeah, so here's a little bit more backstory about their opposition to her uh, confirmation. The industry's original campaign against Sohn relied on gross misrepresentations of her speeches and writings to paint her as an enemy of diversity in telecommunications and as an advocate of suppressing conservative viewpoints. So we talked about that earlier, but I'm just showing you, it's been well documented. Um, she's a strong defender of diversity. Now, let's get to Fosta and Sesta. So... As for the latest campaign, it relies on a knee-jerk assumption that Congress's effort to eradicate online sex trafficking is worthy of admiration and support, despite the shortcomings of FOSTA and SESTA. The laws were signed in 2018, shortly after the government shut down uh, Backpage.com, a website used by sex workers to connect with clients, but also, according to congressional investigators and law enforcement, used by sex traffickers. The laws essentially carved out sex-related advertisements as exceptions to the safeguards of Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act, which renders online platforms immune from liability for user-posted content. Blunt and others maintain that FOSTA and SESTA increase the dangers for sex workers by censoring online platforms they used to safely screen clients. The laws forced many back to making ass uh, assignations uh, on the street or through pimps. So this is why so many sex workers uh, opposed FOSTA and SESTA. It's because it made them more vulnerable, right? When you take this thing and you relegate it to the dark web and you make it so that way you know um sex workers have to go back to the streets where it's you know um there's less daylight on it you just endanger their lives and this was a step backwards um according to a lot of sex workers but working online gave sex workers more autonomy over their labor and reduced the need to work under pimps and exploitative management according to a report co-authored by blunt and issued by Hacking Hustling, a sex worker collective she co-founded. Criticism of FOSTA and SESTA has also come from the Government's Accountability Office, surely among the most buttoned down of government agencies, which reported in 2021 that gathering tips and evidence to investigate and prosecute those who control or use online platforms has become more difficult since the laws enacted due to the relocation of platforms overseas, platforms use of complex payment systems, and the increased use of social media platforms. So usually the LA Times has a paywall. So if you can't read this article, I'd recommend this write-up by Jessica Corbett of Common Dreams. And um, I want to encourage you to sign this petition at battleforthenet.com. So Battle for the Net is one of the best organizations like i'd say the leading organization fighting to restore net neutrality and they've been all over this so the petition is tell democratic leaders condemn the homophobic attacks on fcc nominee gg Sohn." and i get that like petitions nowadays usually don't do anything I, I get that you feel as if it's useless but it takes two seconds so if you can make a big enough stink then you know i think that that's really really a small thing that you can do if you believe in net neutrality. So they explain here, 
that, you know, remember when Ajit Pai took over the FCC and got a net neutrality? We've been working for years to overturn that corrupt move. And we finally got our chance when the Biden administration nominated Gigi Sohn, a highly qualified public interest advocate who, unlike Pai, has never worked for the telecom industry. But Sohn has been awaiting Senate confirmation for over two years. And now she's being attacked. So signed a petition. I, I mean, look, it takes a couple of seconds and it's important. Because lawmakers need to know that there is enough momentum for this. And this is a small thing that we can do to exert a minimal amount of pressure on Democrats to get them to pay attention. We're almost at 100,000. 100, if we can get over 100,000, we're like almost there. Then I think that's great, right? So that's your update on net neutrality. All we have to do is confirm GG Sone and um, that's it. Ajit Pai's legacy is flushed down the toilet like that. So yeah, really important. Pay attention to that confirmation hearing. And if you have um, any Democratic senators um, who are representing you, or even hell, Republican senators, that's not like they're going to listen, but they should still receive pressure. Um, give them a call. Leave them a message and let them know that you strongly support the confirmation of Gigi Sohn. You're tired of GOP um, Senator stonewalling this effort, and it's time to confirm her once and for all so she can conduct the work at the behest of consumers that Biden nominated her to do.